Hi, Egan. Can you hear me okay? I can. Can you hear me okay? I'm not seeing it. Give me one second. I'm having a bit of a problem here. Um, but how's your day going for you? It's going pretty good. Good, good. Uh, anything new, anything different? Nope. Okay. How's the studying coming along, by the way? So it's going pretty good. Uh, I've definitely found it helpful. I mean, I'm. we'll see how well it goes um, at the end of August, because that's when school starts for me. But um, Okay. What, what day in August does it start for you? Let's see. It starts the 28th, I believe. 28th, okay. Yeah, and you want to continue what we're doing for the rest of the uh, semester, make sure you get your A in your class? Uh, yeah, probably. I think okay, sure. maybe see um, a little bit into the class how I'm feeling so that we can guide it later on. Um, okay. So maybe take a break for like a month or two, possibly, but just maybe start back up once I know what I need to like work on specifically or not. Okay. Well, I do have some um, uh, some more of a, a discount if you were to sign up uh, pretty early. It's kind of an early bird discount. Uh, it, it does get a little bit more expensive if you were to wait maybe a month or two. Uh, Got it. Uh, so you, something to kind of consider there. Okay. All right. Well, let's kind of email you and we can just kind of keep walking, talking that way. Okay. Now, do you get a chance to kind of work through some of those problems we we're talking about or? I did. Okay. Did you have any questions on them? No, they all made sense. Yeah. Okay. That's good to hear. Okay. Can you see my screen okay? Uh, yes. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I'm not sure if you got this last problem we talked about here. Did you get a chance to look at this one? Only a little bit. Okay, well, talk to me a little about this problem. Tell me how you went about finding H prime. So, sorry, I'm reading the problem again. So we, So since no, we know that, for you to turn your microphone up a little bit, it's a little hard to hear you. Yeah. Still. Is that better? Uh, not quite yet. How about now? No, let's see if I get these working a little better on my side then. <clears throat> we'll just, we'll just have to give it a try and see what happens. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> All right. So tell me what happened here. How did you find H prime? So, um, the graph of g of 2 and h of 2 both equal 4 and we know that the uh that this function is tangent to um that point we, we know that that the uh, like this graph touches the point at um at 2 4 mm -hmm. Because it's it's tangent, so it has to touch there. Um, and that was about as far as I remember. Okay, so what's it mean to be tangent to to a curve again? At this kind of curve, and if I'm looking at this point, what does it mean to be tangent at that point? It means that the line only touches that point and doesn't like touch any other point on the graph. Kind of. Um, it's going to be kind of relative within a localized area because when you have your tangent line, you can see it's kind of possible to cross graph more than once. But in a localized region, that's usually pretty true. Uh, it's only going to be at one point. And what interpretation can we give to the derivative? It's going to be that function, right? 
well, it's rate of change, instantaneous rate of change. Mm -hmm. And how do I incorporate that uh, in my tangent line? It's going to be the slope right there. Oh, okay. I see. So the slope of the tangent line, that's the derivative if I with that value. Mm, okay. <laughs> oh, well, I one? see. Okay, that makes sense. Good, Got good, it. good. Now, make sure you write that down in your notes because you are definitely going to need to know that <laughs> in your class. Okay, so what about the next one there? So it's like A, B, a function. Um, and what we want to do is find A prime. How would you go about finding A prime? Uh, I assume we're, yeah, okay, so we are. So, we would want to plug in a value that we know, right? So, if we plug in 2 here, is that, like, is that possible? Can you plug in 2 into this? Well, we don't want to plug in until you take the derivative. So, make sure you take derivatives first, then plug in. Got it. Okay. So, you would get... Uh, No, no, not six. You see, have nine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, nah. what kind of function is this? Is it a sum, difference, quotient? What is that? Um, that's a product, right? It's a product. So, if you have a product, you apply. Which one? Um, it's F prime G, that one. I forget the name. <laughs> and then that's going to be the product rule. Product rule. That's what it's called. So you took the root for the first function, make sure you multiply by the second function now. And then add it to. Add it to three, and then h prime, h prime, which is two thirds. Well, do you want you do not want to say two fifths yet? Just say h prime. Oh, okay. Just say h prime. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now go ahead and pl uh, plug in the two now. So now you're going to set x equal to two and plug it in. Okay. So we know that this. Uh, this is equal to four, mm -hmm. and this is equal to two thirds. Good. And then you plug in two for the rest. So a prime equals There it is. Good. So you got a good idea what's going to happen there. It's perfect. Now, what about C? Yeah. This is where we're going to start using the idea of Lowenthal's rule that we were discussing. Mm -hmm. So what's happening here for C? What did you do for part C? Ian? So 
so since we're taking the limit of this, we know that it's it doesn't evaluate to anything. So the answer has to be zero. Uh, no. So what you want to do is plug it in. So you get zero over something. Okay, so now we're not quite for sure, but notice what it says right here. Can you use Lobital's rule? Yeah, so it has so to be zero to over zero or infinity yeah, over infinity. What value. That means that it has so to be got, one, right? Exactly. So it's got to be one. So that so, part's done. But how are you going to figure out F prime? Okay, let's just go ahead and apply Lobital's rule to it. And let's see what happens. Hmm. So when you apply Lobital's rule, you have the limit as x goes off to 2. Yeah. The root of top is going to be 2x. What about the root down below? Uh, you have to take, well, you can't take the product rule. We're, We're going to be applying not the product rule, but which rule? Uh... Uh, I don't know. Okay. Uh, you're going to find a chain rule. Oh, okay. I see. Do you remember what the chain rule is going to do right here? Uh, it's like okay, right there. Ah, yeah, 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 I remember. Yeah. You're on the inside. Okay, now, uh, if you were to take the limit as this thing is going off to a value of two, what's going to happen now? You get four over negative three times just one. What about the square? So you get you get that. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, two right there. Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I think you're kind of on the right track here on these given problems. Did you have any questions about these or? No. Okay, well, just keep thinking about these two. Um, these are just some real good concepts right there. Yeah. Now, what I want to do is kind of rewind it a little bit. We've been talking about this um, in a previous session. We kind of hinted on it here, too. But let's say if I can give you this equation. Do you think you might be able to find y prime for me? Y prime. Can you calculate the derivative? Would it be the same as? No. No. I think you talked about this, or you mentioned this, I think it was about two or three lessons back. You ask, what would happen if I had three products for multiplication? Yeah. Find the product rule. Remember how we did this? You do. Um, you do this, and then you do the outside as well. Or well, basically, you're going to take a derivative for each one of these pieces. So the derivative for uh, x to the fourth, that's three x, excuse me, that's four x to the third power. Mm -hmm. Then 
<clears throat> hands off, leave it alone. Good work oh, on this. Oh yeah, you can just continue to fill in. So this is kind of an extension of the power pool that we were discussing. Yeah. Okay. And how do you take the derivative for the yeah. other? Cosine three x, and then what happens next? Make sure uh, you change the one. Take the derivative on the inside. Oh, the and then you multiply it by yep three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So not too bad, right? Nope. So what if I was going to take this and make it a little bit more challenging? Let's say if I was going to throw you this problem. And what you want to do here is you want to find y prime. How are you going to do it? Or how could you do it? You can split it up into and then do each one, right? Okay, you could definitely set this up in terms of a product rule. That's, that's brilliant. That's one way of how I can go about this. What's another way of how you can go about this? What do you have here? You have a division symbol. So a quotient. quotient so you can apply the quotient, quotient rule. rule. Remember what the quotient rule stipulates? Uh no. Okay, that's we're gonna have uh f over g. F over g. And then that's and when you take the derivative. G of X so times F. And then it's the same as the uh, the product rule, but over G. Pretty yeah, close. GX. Minus right here instead of plus. Ah, okay. So I That's can it. definitely do this here. That's not much of an issue. But let's say if I was going to make this a little bit more interesting. Let's see if I was going to do this. <laughs> How would you solve that one? I would say split it apart. Why would you say split it apart? So that you can just apply the product rule instead of trying to deal with the quotient rule. Okay, if you can make it into a product, it's usually a little bit easier. But in this case, it's really just going to be kind of convoluted and complicated any way you go. Okay. Now, let me ask you, because remember, we always want to go deeper in these kind of situations. Why? Why is it more challenging for this problem? Now, I suppose something like x squared plus 1 over x plus 2. Why is this one? easy and this one's harder what do you see because of the exponents not necessarily the exponent because i can put an exponent over here and it's still relatively easy you see what we have here and oh there. it's product on the top and the bottom <laughs> i have a product so what I can do whenever you're confronted with these kind of situations is I can work around the complexity. Now I can definitely apply the quotient rule, product rule, and just kind of merge the two ideas together. Or I can embrace the understanding of logarithms again, like we did the other last time. Now for our logarithms, there's lots and lots of properties. Do you remember your properties for logs? Which ones? What if I had a quotient? That's the same as uh, 
subtracting two separate. Right? What if I had a quotient A or B? How would you rewrite those? Perfect. You got it. So let's do it right here. And what if I was going to have a product? How do I recalibrate products? Product becomes uh, LN. Egan, you got it. Perfect. And one more question. What if you had a power on your argument block? You just do. You got it. So we'll use all these properties here and we will recalibrate the right hand side. And what's the natural log of E, by the way? Natural log of E is just one, right? You got it. Again, you're awesome. You got it here. <laughs> What about the left-hand side? It's just going to be natural or Y. Yep. Now, here's my question. Do you remember what the derivative first is for the natural log of U? That's U prime over... I don't remember the bottom. Of U. Oh, U. <laughs> I was okay, trying to so complicate it. Let me go ahead and do the left-hand side. <laughs> Left-hand side is when I take the derivative, I'll have y prime over y. Mm -hmm. How do you take the derivative of all these other pieces over here on the right? And actually, I forgot my parentheses. I need a stomach like distribution error. Um, well, you see that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just work it out, I guess. So I, so I guess good. It's just one over x. You got it. Okay, and what are we actually trying to find? We're trying to find y prime. Yeah, y prime. It's right there. So how am I going to solve for y prime then? Multiply by y. Multiply both sides by y. But Egan, what was y? Why was this up here? That crazy thing right there. Yeah. So I want to take that crazy thing right there, bring it down. And I'll multiply it. We found a derivative. Now, <clears throat> this approach right here of taking the derivative, this is known as logarithmic differentiation. Mm, okay. And logarithmic differentiation is very, very useful, especially when you have products, you have quotients running in the mix. So <clears throat> I can apply logarithmic differentiation to this one. I could have also just as easily have done it to this one. So for this one, let's just kind of look at it again, take an actual log of both sides. We'll start applying all of our properties, this um, have logarithm x to the four. It's a product, so I'm going to yank it apart into a sum. Just like this. Now, I don't we'll also what incorporate you do the idea for... that powers. Pull the powers out front. Let's bring the four and the seven up. Front. Okay. Does it all make sense? Yep. I forgot how you do this. I don't know that we actually did this. Uh, well, you can't really do anything with it because you're not powering up the argument. It's not the multiplication. You're kind of just locked in place. 
Oh, okay. But let's go take the derivative now. Drop the y, y prime, or we're at x, 7, drop the x minus 2, drop the sign, and then take the derivative. Okay, and there we go. I see, okay. And then multiply it by y, where this term is over here. On both Times sides. the original. And if you were to simplify it, you would get right here. Okay. So logarithmic differentiation is probably the ideal way to go, especially when you have a lot of products or you have a lot of quotients all kind of in the mix. Another time you may want to use it is whenever you have something raised to a power, like x to the x. Take the natural log of both sides. Take the x, which was an exponent on top, bring it out front. Now, notice what we have. We've got a product. <clears throat> so apply the product rule. Y prime on the numerator, y in the denominator. Just like this. And finish it off. Multiply both sides by y. So it would be x to the x. This is that's what y is. And here we go. Okay. Let me stop there. See how it's making sense to you. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Good, 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 good. Second, grab a problem here for us. All right, ready for a challenge? I think so. <laughs> Bring it on. Okay, you can. Here's a problem here. We got a quotient. Now we know we can apply the quotient rule, but tick tock, tick tock. You got to get an answer fast. I don't recommend using the quotient rule. I'd probably recommend using logarithmic differentiation. Why would I want to use logarithmic differentiation here as opposed to just kind of crank it off by using the quotient rule? Because you can a lot easier separate the top and the bottom and then figure out what each, like each of the top of the bottom is a lot easier than right. trying to use quotient rule. And if I left it the way it is, chain rule, product rule, quotient rule, all in the mix, makes it more complicated. Okay, so show me how you're going to take the derivative here using logarithmic differentiation. And make sure you get the left-hand side too. Don't forget that. How do you work with square roots? That's just a half. <laughs> Good, you didn't get it.
Egan, you're rocking it out. Perfect. Distribution. Good. <laughs> Good. Do yeah, you want me it. to? Okay. Simplify? No. <laughs> <laughs> These kind of problems, usually you don't simplify, you leave it alone. But what you do need to do in the very end, oftentimes, is just replace the Y. Okay. And that will complete the problem. So just remember, always make sure you plug <laughs> in in the very end. Pack the line. Plug in Y just to be safe kind of thing? Right. Usually they want you to express it uh, in terms of X, not Y in X. So make sure you ah, do okay. have it all in terms of X from the very end. You know so how this was a whole lot there. easier, wasn't it? Yeah. Push roll. So logarithmic differentiation. This is one of those skill sets they're going to teach you for a few days. Um, but now you, you got a quick reference here on and really how to really approach these problems. And if the problems start getting a little bit more complicated, hey, not a big deal. Uh, use the logs, break it apart, individual pieces, and then crank it out from there and kind of see what happens. And a lot of times when you see uh, an exponent, that's usually a good, clear indication. That's also what you want to do is apply a, a use logarithmic differentiation. Like for this problem, I would apply logarithmic differentiation just so I can take that exponent and bring it down. Mm -hmm. Now, another problem I want you to kind of think about later on today is what if you have x to the x to the x? How would you find this one? And also, if we're to have y equals Let's say we're going to have x raised to the 2x to the third power. And think about how you would solve those problems later on today. Now, any questions about anything we talked about thus far? Nope. Okay. So now we got a good understanding of card rule, quotient rule, power rule, um, chain rule, uh, this logarithmic differentiation, and some special properties like the logarithms and exponents. Now, here's my next question. Suppose what you need to do is you need to find the equation of the tangent line. And let's say we're looking at x equals root 3 over 2. And we're going to be in quadrant 1. And we're looking at the equation x squared plus y squared equals one. Now, first off, Egan, what is this? That's a circle. Okay, circle. And it's also a special name for it called the... Uh, I'm not sure. Unit circle. Oh, okay. It was like, a race. there has to be something I... <laughs> this has to be something I know. And I'm looking up here at root, or actually, maybe we're over here, root three over two, and I'm looking at that line. Now, if I want to find the equation of the tangent line, 
first off, how to find the equation of any line. I can use the point slope form. Mm -hmm. I already know what X1 is going to be. That was provided. How am I going to find that Y value? By plugging in? Plug it in. Now, if you plug it in, you're going to have 3 over 4. Subtract off 3 fourths. So what's my y value? It's just one half. It's going to be plus or minus, but since we are in quadrant yeah. one, it is going to be one half. So the question now comes, what does m mean? Remember, we kind of discussed it way, way up here. Tangent line slope. It's the... um. It's the value of the derivative. So you just take the okay. derivative of. So how am I going to find y prime? A value that root three over two. Because if you can do that, you're essentially done. Take the derivative of the function. Okay, do I have a function here? No. Okay, why don't I have a function? Because it's a circle, so you have multiple answers for the same point. Right, I got a curve. It doesn't pass a vertical line test, so it's not a function. Well, all this long our time, we've been talking about finding derivatives of functions. Mm -hmm. Again, I don't have a function. So I guess I give up and I go home. No, don't do that. <laughs> what could I do to get a function? I could maybe solve for y. And since I am above the x-axis, I do want to take the principal square root. And y prime, I can say y prime. I can also say dy dx just no way of writing it in mm -hmm. math max again we don't really like radicals we like using the exponential notation yeah how would i find the derivative for this log the logarithmic method or i could do it logarithmically but a little faster ways use what else Oh, chain rule. <laughs> chain rule. <clears throat> so the chain rule, bring the half out front, pick one off the top, yep. do it on the inside. And I can simplify it down a little bit, and I would have them. And when I plug in the root two over two, Here, once again, I'll get three fours, subtract it from one, I get a four, uh, screw it, I get a half. So I'm going to get negative root three and a half. Okay. Crisis averted. <laughs> we found it. <laughs> now, <clears throat> before I move on, any questions on it? Is there like any faster way to do it? Or is that the only way that you can do it? That's a great question. It's kind of long, wasn't it? Yeah. How can I make it go a little bit faster? And it all resides in right here. D yeah, y it's... dx. What does that really mean? It's just saying the slope of the function. So okay, change that's over the interpretation time. of it geometrically. 
I can also think about it as being instantaneous rate of change. I can also think about it as being an operator that operates on a function y, where I take the derivative, maybe it's a capital D notation of y. Now, if I take the derivative of x, what do I get? Just get y. Well, derivative for x is 1, 1 by the power rule. And if I use the same idea here, where I take the derivative of y dx, it's like running dy dx. So if I have dx over dx, what is that? Yeah, mean? you just get 1. I was thinking, I was just thinking that there was a y there. That's why I said y. Yeah, that, yeah. And this is another way I can write these. This is what's called a uh, an operator. It's when you're operating on a function. And there's going to be different types of operators you're going to encounter in calculus. The river is just one of them. Now, let's say for a second, if I can change this up a little bit more, and let's say I operate on x squared. What does that become? X. And get you your 2x. Well, it's very similar to what we're doing right here, where I'm going to have the derivative, and it's kind of like saying a dx over dx, but I'm also going to have this 2x when we kind of apply this chain rule idea. Now, a lot of times we don't see this because that's just one. Where does the uh, the 2x come from, though? The 2x is just going to be your, your typical power rule. Oh, okay. So what if I was going to take this and change it up a little bit more? <clears throat> well, I can do the same thing. I have 2y, dy, dx. And Egan, what was that dy, dx again? That's just uh, y prime. Y prime. Now, if I want to find the equation of the tangent line, I'm tasked with finding the derivative. But how I get it is a matter of opinion. Who cares? So what I can do instead is I can look at my equation, x squared plus y squared equals 1. So what, you get 2x plus 2y, y prime equals 1? And what's the derivative of a constant? It's just zero. Because constants don't change. Yep. And if I was going to solve for y prime, bring the 2x from the left to the right, as well as divide both sides by 2y. And look what we get. Mm. The exact same thing. And if I was going to solve for y, I could take it and plug it in. But I don't need to, because I already know what y is. That was a half. Take it, plug it, crank it, done. I see. Now, this process right here, this is known as implicit differentiation. differentiation. And this is something that a lot of students really do struggle with. I mean, it makes sense the to me. Behind... Go ahead. I said, I mean, I said, I mean, it makes sense to me. You're just you know what the value is, so you can switch those values out because they're the same. Kind of the secret behind implicit differentiation is you just take the derivative like you always have done. But what you're going to do is you're going to tack on a y prime at the very end. And that's it. Every single time you encounter a y, you incorporate a y prime. So let's take a look at this one right here. Let's say I have x squared plus y cubed equals a. Take the derivative like you always have done. 2x, 3y squared. I just counted y, y. Tack on y prime equals. equals 0. Solve for y prime. Now, whenever you do implicit differentiation, it is entirely possible. In fact, it's going to happen on a regular basis for the most part. 
you're going to have both an X and a Y in it. Don't worry. Mm-hmm. Just keep it there. <clears throat> Don't do anything else with it because there's usually you're not going to be able to solve it. Let's say for a moment if I was going to have this one. X, Y squared. And let's actually change that a little bit more. Let's say X cubed. Y squared equals, and let's go back to an oldie but a goodie, e to the 5x. Now, first off, I want to take the derivative. I want to operate on both sides. What I do on one side of the equation, I need to do to the other side of the equation. And if I take the derivative for e to the 5x, what was that identity again? What did we get there? remember this one is slipping i can't remember e to the u times u prime oh there is u mm-hmm. and for 5x is fine no there's something you have to look at the left hand side what do i have here oh a product so you have to take the product rule that's exactly right. And I'm about to encounter a Y. And I'm taking the derivative with respect to X. So everywhere I encounter a Y, we take its derivative. You have to get no y if and buts about y it. Prime. I got to tack on that Y prime. And then from here, I can solve if I needed to. And keep the y's in it. Can't really do anything with it. And this is implicit differentiation. And this is a skill set that you also need to master in this class. Okay. Well, let me stop there. Uh, see if you have any questions on this. So when you eventually get to the last step where you have y prime equals some value, should you solve for y at the very beginning, or should you just no. don't solve? So just y. leave it in terms of x and y. Yeah. Okay. Now there might be some things you could do for simplification, and if you're looking at a multiple choice problem on the AP exam, you might need to do some things like that, and. I'll show you a problem next week where you can take it a few more steps on, on how to simplify. But for the time being, just leave it alone. You're going to be hard pressed to solve this for one. Now, you could in this case, but you're taking the square root and you do not know if you need to take the positive or the negative. So you're going to have to break it up into a piecewise function and it's starting to get more complicated. So just leave it alone. Now, let me put some problems up here for you. Some problems you can work on throughout the week. And the first one, we already did one. But take a look at three. Take a look at seven. And for three and for seven, you're going to have to um, solve for y prime. So you're going to have to collect like terms. Because whenever you take the derivative here, you will get a y prime. But you will also get a y prime on the next one. Also there. So be careful. Here's a good one right here. Here's a kind of the same one we did earlier. Try 15. Try 18. And if you're brave, which you know you are, <laughs> see if you can do 20. That's a more challenging one. You see if you can take it all the way to simplification as you can. Okay. How you feel about here today, Egan? I feel pretty good. Good, good. Give me one more little bit. Let's go and grab a few more problems for you. So when would our next um next time be? I we're back on our regular schedule. 
uh, for Monday. So that doesn't work for me. I'm uh so that's gonna be on the seventh. Yeah. We're gonna be out of town or um yeah, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be away until um the thirteenth. Okay. That's not a big deal. I'll have some recordings for you so you'll be able to keep up with things. Okay. Okay. So you'll have all that available. Cool. Okay, let me grab a, <clears throat> another problem here for you real fast. Should I just do this one? Uh, let's see, let's see, yeah, figure that one out here later on today. It's going to take a little more time than we have here. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I already gave those two problems to you earlier. So don't forget about those two. Let me write those down again. Pull them down here. Okay, that's a probably a good number of problems right there. So <laughs> give us a try, and we'll talk about these uh, first time uh, next time. Okay. All right, Egan. Well, if you need anything else, just let me know. Otherwise, I'll see yep. you next time. Yeah, see you. Right, take care. Thank you. Bye. I hope that today's lesson was a positive and an encouraging learning experience, and that you have a better understanding of how to solve these problems. Be sure to set some time there today and throughout the week to review these concepts, to rework these examples so that you're better prepared for the next lesson. If you need anything, just let me know. You're always welcome to send me an email or to stop by during office hours. Until next time, keep up the good work and have a great day.